Hello there, and welcome to the Gina Gardner and Friends show. Today, my guest is Nicholas Haynes, and he is an amazing man and a great friend. He is from the Five Institute. He's the creator of the Vitality Test, and I've taken it, and it's something that's very special and so informative. And he's the co-founder of No More Boxes. Now, that's not about packaging. Well, I suppose it is in one way. It is about not putting people into boxes. So, Nicholas, a huge welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, absolutely my pleasure, Jean. I've been looking forward to this. Oh, thank you. So, come on, what's the Five Institute? Uh, and how have you got involved with that? Okay. Um, I got involved with it, like all good things, by basically starting it, founding it. <laughs> so, so it is my uh, it Your is my baby. baby. My baby, my baby. And well, it is my baby, but there have been and are many, many people that are supportive of what we're trying to do and have helped helped us with it. So it is a it is a, a joint effort, a collective exercise of being there are many people that are involved with it. Um so yeah, that I I I start I started it. What are we about? Um I think the easiest way to describe it is we're all about internal and external cultures. How do you live with yourself and how do we live together? Because ultimately, if we can't get that bit right, then we've got some we've got some problems. So it's about how do you live with yourself and how do we live together? That's what we're about. You know, I've always said to all of my clients, the most important relationship you will ever have is the relationship that you have with yourself. And that is reflected in the relationships you have with other people. And those relationships with self and others is going to be our theme today. And I, I, the vitality test that you have created, I would like to know, and I'm sure my listeners would, what is it and why is that so useful when you're talking about relationships with self and others? Mm. Okay. So the vitality test is based on my 40 years of working with Chinese medicine, Chinese philosophy, ancient Chinese medicine, ancient Chinese philosophy. And it's a way to assess what your energy dynamic is, the balance of five distinct energies we have in, in us, within us. And it's designed to, for you to recognize, okay, I have these energies uh, within me and these energies are living together. So we might have one part of you wants one thing, like freedom, and another part of you wants to belong and be part of a community. Well, how does that work together? So the vitality test is measuring these energies within it, within us. It's completely free. And it really came from, I practiced as an acupuncturist for nearly 35 years, and I had a two-year waiting list to work with me. And however hard I worked, I couldn't get that. Yeah. And it was a way to say, okay, well, could we put this information out there in the world that didn't involve me being there all the time and therefore could we we scale it i recognized i was a very limiting uh a limiting a wonderful limiting factor but a limiting factor nevertheless <laughs> exactly there are only 24 hours in every day aren't there right. yeah. <laughs> so what on what is the vitality um test based um so it's based on um some chinese philosophy that is kind of around about three thousand plus years old okay. and it was and it was used as a way it's based on that like the five elements the five energies which is part of their medical system uh and it was originally used by the emperors and the kings in order to understand politics and economics uh personality relationships uh, and a way to kind of fundamentally understand the world and then in a 15 year period, all the use of those five elements, five energies within economics, relationships and everything was all destroyed. Everything. We know it was used because we had the library records, but we didn't ever have the books. Right. And there was there were bits left in medicine, a Chinese traditional Chinese medicine. But the rest of it was uh, lost, lost. No, it was, wasn't lost. It was basically destroyed in something called the Great Fires of Qin. They basically burnt the books and buried the philosophers that talked about it. So it kind of died out in a very brutal way. And I have spent all of my adult life trying to say, OK, well, there was this wisdom. It was being used. Uh, this is my 
understanding of how it works with politics, economics, within education, within personal development, within relationships, within business. Uh, and I literally see it and experience it. And I spend my life trying to take what I see and experience and, 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 and make that practical for people. And the vitality test is the personality relationship part of that. What's interesting, I first came across that when you came and presented to Collaboration Global. We're both members of that. Mm -hmm. And several of my guests are members of Collaboration Global and an incredible group of people. But what amazed me is that people had taken the test and they were blown away at how accurately that described who they were and how they operated. And mm. particularly in terms of how they saw themselves and when they shared it, how closely that matched how we as a group saw them. So it was it was really very well rounded, I thought, and more so than perhaps any model that I've seen, certainly in recent times. Mm. Well, I, I'm I'm really glad you found it that way, because a lot of work has gone in to try and create it. But ultimately, although there's a lot of work that's gone into create it, what it's doing is it's just tapping into it inherently, energetically, who we are. It's just yeah. uh, that's what it's doing. It's, but I think um, although it's brilliant at identifying who you are, what your needs are and our relationships as, as well, what it doesn't do is it doesn't put you in a box and say you are this. No. It allows a fluid exp exploration of who you are um, and also none of the five energies are gendered so you don't say okay i have this energy because i'm a woman or i have this energy yeah. because i'm a man it's non-gendered uh it's it doesn't put you in a box and it allows us to see who we are and who other people are and in, and you're right the, the big feedback we get from it is people say uh, I, I i have never known something that has pulled out such a, a subtle expression of who i am yes so thank you. I'm glad you found that. <laughs> I want to talk about how the relationship that we have with ourselves colours our life and the life of people around us. Um, and how, you know, maybe having an, a better understanding of ourselves can help us in that deep dive work to be um, the best version of ourselves. Why do you think it's so important that we invest the time and the energy in getting to know who we are and you know becoming, I always talk about becoming your own best friend, you know, having the same criteria for yourself as you do for other people, treating ourselves well, not indulgently, but well. Mm. Uh, so... <sighs> It, it, that, that's a that's a really really good question i hope i'm going to do it justice with my uh, with my answer actually i'm going to go at a slight tangent first of all okay um i'm going to go a slight tangent because this is the old this old maxim this old saying uh uh treat others as though in the way that you would like to be treated is that because many thing? people don't do they no and i'm glad that they don't treat others in the way that they want to be treated that they want to be treated yeah, or they look, actually do no well the idea is that you should treat others in the way that you want to be treated yes okay um the, the problem with that is you should actually treat others in the way that they want to be treated not in the way that you want to be treated interesting now now the way i um, i frame those words is somewhat different yes i heard you yeah uh, and i think it's a really interesting distinction yeah yeah so it is, first of all, recognizing the way that we want to be treated and then the way that other people want to be yeah. treated. I, I think that's the and, and not assuming that they're that they're the same. Yes. Um, so I think that's the first thing. I think that's a, a, a foundation step. The other thing I think is, is important within the kind of getting to know oneself yes. is it's very, very easy for us to miss what it is that we're utterly genius and brilliant about and gifted about just to, to miss it because those things are incredibly easy and incredibly natural to us yes so we then don't appreciate that we're actually brilliant and we're wonderful and we're really good at these things because we're taught that most things have to be hard but actually the stuff that we're the stuff that we're really good at it's just what we do 
is yeah. what we do. So I often say to people, well, say, what is that stuff? Well, you can take the vitality test and that'll tell you, but you also just, what do people thank you for? And you say, oh, that was nothing. <laughs> and it is nothing because it was effortless to you, but yeah. there is something about not recognizing it. I often think it's a bit like, um, we're like all like butterflies. And when we look down, we see this kind of gray, hairy, slightly tubby body. But actually, what everyone else sees are these magnificent wings with colors and, and, and utter brilliance. But we just don't see that. So the well, Vitastia Transcellular... way of putting it. Yeah, we just don't see that. So the Vitastia Transcellular, these are your wings. This is what other people are saying. And it will be, you will say, people say, oh, thank you so much. That, that was nothing. That was fine. It was okay. Oh, thank you so much for listening. Oh, that was nothing. Oh, God, that was a great idea. Thank you so much. That was nothing. It was kind of like effortless to you. Yes. So I think when we get to understand what we're wonderful about, at and doing, and we feel okay about ourselves, it's kind of much easier to make other people feel okay about themselves. Yes. Whereas if we don't feel okay about ourselves, it gets to be a, a slight reluctance to make everyone else look brilliant, because if we don't feel brilliant, then we don't tend we're not we, we are generous by nature but it's quite hard if you don't like yourself to be loving and kind to other people you know one of the things i think that makes the difference is how judgmental people tend to be about themselves mm. they use a completely different set of criteria when they're saying whether something's excellent good or okay to that that they expect from other people yeah. And I think so often we're conditioned, aren't we, that if you acknowledge your gifts, then you're being boastful. Mm -hmm. And I think making the distinction between coming from a place of ego, I'm better than you, rather than I'm the best version of me. I think that making that distinction is so important. Be interested in your view. Yeah, yeah, no, I, um, I totally agree. And I'm going to show my age here. <laughs> but I would, I would say, um, if Louis Armstrong didn't blow his own trumpet, we would have missed out a whole lot of activity. <laughs> a whole lot of <laughs> so I think we should blow, blow our own trumpet. But there's a difference between blowing our own trumpet and uh, uh, in order to put other people down or to to, to recognise and celebrate ourselves and, uh, and and celebrate ourselves. Then we also have the kind of cultural difference, isn't it? Yes. Of don't certain cultures are not keen on us. Uh, standing out but i'm not really talking about uh i love me and who do you love we're not no. talking about that we're talking about us recognizing that actually i'm really quite good at this stuff and actually if you look at what the world needs it needs us to be heroic within what we're good at in order to and if what we're good at is listening then that's a heroic action. You know, what we're good at is ideas or we're good at, good, we're good at is non-judgment. As you are, if you look at your Vitality Test profile, you're a very non-judgmental, accepting, open person, which is why people warm to you very, very quickly. And that is a, a gift yes. that yes. you can bring out in, uh, in people. And if you look at the work that you do, it stems from that easy, natural talent that you have of making people feel listened to or valued or non-judged or explored i found doing the vitality test very interesting and you learn a lot about myself in terms of that and uh, one of the things that i find interesting is how we often dismiss things which don't have um a a, a physical outcome well the outcome's not quite so easy to measure. So, for example, you use listening. You know, one of the things that time and time again comes across when speaking to clients is that they feel heard, that they feel seen. And if you're listening to this, you know, listening to somebody, and I mean truly listening, giving them your 100% attention, not half of it on the clock or on the mobile phone, not thinking, oh God, what am I going to cook for dinner? But truly holding that space for someone. I think that's one of the biggest gifts that you can give anyone. Mm. 
Yeah, no, I would absolutely, I would absolutely agree. But then we have very similar energies, well, so we would yeah. think that. <laughs> we would think that. Okay. Whereas, whereas someone else might think, well, actually, if you have a lot of wood energy, your your big thing is actually the most important thing is to defend the the people that cannot defend themselves. Yeah. That is the most important thing. We have a lot of. Uh, 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 I uh, want them to be able to defend themselves and have that yeah. capacity to do that. Absolutely, but that's your energy is wanting yeah. uh, wanting to do that, and and someone else says, well, actually, what we need to do is make them independent, or what we need to do is so every energy has a view of the world that is their truth. Yes. And someone with a lot of water energy will say, well, the most important thing is we, we is we create safety and security for people and we we create a place where they can fulfill their purpose and their promise. Yes. And you say, well, no, the most important thing is we listen to them. No, 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 no. No, I didn't say no, <laughs> no, no. I didn't say yeah. the most. I said it's a huge gift you can give. Uh, yes. Okay. That was me not that was me not listening properly. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I'd like to explore the relationship between the relationship we have with ourselves and the relationship we have with other people and how by strengthening the relationship that we have with ourselves that improves our relationship with others so don't go away relationships well they color the whole of your life and you know you think about the people that you love you may not like the people that you love all the time, the people you work with. How do you get on with them? You know, what are your relationships like with other people? Just come on, what do you see as the relationship between our relationship with us and our relationship with other people? I, I, think, it, I think it's one of love and kindness and respect. And if we are not kind and loving to ourselves and respectful for ourselves, then it's really hard to be fully that way with other people. So at the Five Institute, we call, talk about something called your kind set. So it's like your mindset, except it's all about kindness. And we get people to ask three questions in a situation. Is this kind to me? Is this kind to others? And is this kind to the planet? And that's a dance. That's a, and sometimes, you have to be a little bit kinder to others and other times you have to be a little bit kinder to yourselves and other times you have to be a little bit kinder to the planet but it's about trying to get that in balance yeah. so I've, I've never ever ever met anybody that is too kind no but i have met people that are out of balance with that kindness and it's the same with self-love or so it's trying to get that trying to get that balance right but we tend to kind of start with, let's start to work out to be kind and forgiving and loving and respectful to ourselves. And that is the foundation. And once we do that, it makes it much easier for us to do that for other people because we're not comparing, we're not doing, you know, the normal game stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think comparatonitis is uh, <laughs> far more deadly than any virus, but there we <laughs> As an interesting way of looking at it, because ultimately i think many many people are out of balance that their sense of self-worth is based on if i am if i am help everybody and i never say no and you know i put my priorities at the bottom of the pile then i'll feel better about myself but ultimately it's never quite enough and so often people will ignore their own health physical mental emotional spiritual and so they become ill because they're so busy trying to help other people, but are in reality trying to make themselves feel better. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, that's certainly, that's certainly a very strong pattern. Yes. Um, uh, and, and I mean, every energy has a, a, a life lesson, if you were trying okay. to work with that in a way is one of the kind of universal ones of some have, a, some energies have a little bit more emphasis on knowing the difference between sacrificing and giving yes uh, and exactly that, that could be a whole program in itself yes <laughs> <laughs> and one of my uh things i recognize as one of my purposes or one of my beliefs in life is that i believe that everybody in the world should have someone that's there for them yeah and my confusion was i thought that had to be me in every instant 
And I know that sounds ridiculous. But no, I can that's... resonate with that. But then, as you say, our, our, our <laughs> models are fairly similar. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I, I, I got myself in trouble thinking I had to be there for everyone. Now I just can kind of try to facilitate that yes. within a uh, within a, a situation. But yeah, I think I think it is a, a, a where where we kind of really kind of get to understand and, and ourselves and kind to ourselves gets to be much easier for other people and I think the whole kindness movement is really out of whack and out of balance mm -hmm. it really kind of throws it because if you look at people say oh are they kind they look at as to whether or not they're being kind to other people or perhaps the planet yeah. they never look and, and when we have these random acts of kindness the random acts of kindness 99 percent of them are aimed at external kindness rather than internal kindness and the problem with constantly being out of balance with that external kindness uh, of being kind to other people or perhaps the planet and we're not kind to ourselves it sets up an imbalance that we then start to feel a fraud that we know that deep down we're not being kind to others so we have to be kinder and kinder to the outside to try and get rid of this horrible feeling that so so it, you, as you described it, it, it it's creating an imbalance it, and we're trying to heal something within ourselves where we say well why don't you just practice trying to do all three at the same time just like you were trying to practice to to dance or to get that right or to get that balance and it's a beautiful game to get to try and get right yeah uh, and then you don't have to try and get it you don't have to get it right you just have to have a go as best you can yeah. It's really interesting because you know working with people, I, I love the whole um, the whole strategy of random acts of kindness. But part of my strategy that I ask people to do is that you have to be in the mix. So mm -hmm. a random act of kindness to yourself each day and a random act of kindness to other people. Do it for thirty days, and you'll find that there is a qualitative difference in how you feel. Um, and random acts of kindness to others do help others but make no mistake it's a gift to us as well so long as i take it you're in balance how m many people really struggle with the random act of kindness to self and to start with they see it as i'll be indulgent to myself so my uh, random act of kindness might be a donut or another glass of wine and then my challenge to them is is that serving you um, at your highest level in terms of your health physical mental emotional and so on until they get the uh, recognize that actually it might be giving myself five minutes of 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 peace and stillness mm -hmm. or it might be taking myself out at lunchtime for a walk rather than working through my lunchtime mm -hmm. um and being able to create that balance i think is so important mm. yeah no you're absolutely i love i love this conversation Gina. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're absolutely right i think one of the ways to try to get a handle on that is is just recognizing what it is that we value yes and we're kind and we're supportive and we're loving to what it is that we value and if we don't value ourselves we don't value our health or don't value our well-being until it's often until it's gone um, but if we don't value that, then it's very hard to to prioritize that, or not even prioritize it, just to give it. It's just re just deserve, just to give it its energy. So it's recognizing what it is that we value, and that in a way comes right back to the kind of beginning part of the conversation is through the vitality test or the relationship with ourselves is ultimately valuing us and ourselves and what we're here to do or what we're here to bring to the world and then valuing other people for what they're doing and accepting that they may have a very different set of priorities based on their energy dynamic yes. than yours and how could I help them how could you help them and how could they you help them I'm okay. very conscious that we're in the last two or three minutes of the program mm. you're going to have to come back there isn't we've got so <laughs> much to talk about um so where can people find you um, so they can go to the Five Institute, F-I-V-E Institute, uh, I-N-S-T-U-T-U-E. Uh, I'm dyslexic, so that spelling was very, very wrong. Fiveinstitute.com. Uh, or just search the, the Vitality Test on, on online. Just search on Google and, and, and we'll come up. Brilliant. And I really recommend that 
that you you do it costs you nothing but my goodness me it gives you an insight into you and how you operate um so part of what we do we're we're very pleased to be members of b1g1 buy one give one mm. and i invite all of my guests to choose one of four projects and quite consistently these days we we look at the projects of clean water feeding the hungry education and there's a project for young people in the to support young people in the ukraine which of those would you like us to donate to on your behalf um so i know b1g1 well uh paul paul i know them i know them well um we usually go for education but i think i think water at the moment is we're in a water we're in a dress aren't we yes. yeah so i think i think i think water would be that's the one yeah water it's a fundamental of life isn't yeah. it and i think yeah. So uh, donation will be going on on um, your behalf. Um, if you're listening to this, please encourage other people to listen. We give free meals based on the numbers of, of listeners each month. Um, and, you know, if you're a business, then do please think about joining B1G1. It's a, a great way of making giving an integral part of your business and can be great marketing too. It just remains for me to say a huge thank you for joining me, Nicholas. We'll definitely have you back. Um, and to say to those of you that are listening, if you'd like to contact me, it's Gina at Gina Gardiner and Friends. Gina, G-I-N-A, Gardiner, G-A-R-D-I-N-E-R, -E and the word and friends. Gina at Gina Gardiner and Friends. Please email me. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know if there are themes you'd like us to cover or if you'd like to consider working with me, then please drop me an email. Take care. Thank you so much. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next show.